Hello and welcome to From the Helm Live here in Perth. I'm Grady Wolf, Market Analyst with Bell Direct, and I'm thrilled to again have Ken Brinsden, the Managing Director of Patriot Battery Metals, in the chair with me. Ken, you've relocated since we last talked. You're now based out of Montreal. Talk to me about that. Great to be with you, Grady. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been telling everybody it's really no hardship living in Montreal. Yeah. It's a lovely place. And yeah. Quebec is a is another one of the great world's mining jurisdictions. It is, absolutely. Now, you've just announced a name change to your flagship Corvette project. I'm going to let you explain it to me and say the name because it's a very long name. I'll give it a go a bit later. Oh, of course, Grady. Yeah, it's, no, it's my pleasure. And we're really happy to rename the project the Shakajawanan Project. Shakajawanan. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a conversation starter. Let's yeah. put it in that category. Um, it's all part of continuing to build our relationship with the Cree, the key First Nations in the James Bay mm -hmm. region. And actually, we're really proud that they've recommended that name to us. As I said, it's a great conversation it's starter. Great conversation yeah, to, starter. To, to really um, introduce people to the concepts around Cree language, what it means. And, yeah. and in this particular case, it's a direct reference to the site. It means climbing a hill or hills that are uh -huh. local to the area. So we're really happy to adopt that name. I appreciate it. It's a tough one. It's Perfect. Um, we'd argue um, a really important link in the future conversation about what it means to be working with the Cree. And um, we're really happy to be doing that. It's really important on an ESG point of view that you're actually acknowledging the, the traditional owners of the land as well. So I think investors are really looking at that kind of fundamental for mining companies at the moment. Yeah. Now, you've just unveiled a major resource update and exploration target for Shakajuanan. Did well you say done. it right? I well did it. Done. Well done. <laughs> uh, where does this project sit on a global scale? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And, and our uh, argument would be it's just going to get bigger and we'd hope that the exploration target clearly demonstrates that. It's been developed by an independent third party, so it's not our in-house view. It, it's our competent person in the form of BBA engineering saying, here's what the endowment is and it's significant. And, and it really just reinforces how important the, the, the Shakajuanan project is going to be on the global stage, but especially as we think about our presence in North America and Europe. Um, if we keep drilling, Grady, there's going to be a lot more tons. I was gonna say, the next question is given the size of the, of the Shakajuanan project, do you think there's still more exploration upside? Yeah, there is, and and hopefully that's plain for people to see. So just in the last four months, in fact, at the close of our winter drill program, we made another important discovery at CV13, a more very high grade. Uh, if I take you back a bit further, yeah. um, in the last couple of years, we discovered the Nova Zone, a really, mm -hmm. really high grade subset of the CV5 resource, and it's looking like we've got something similar at CV13. So what does that point to? It really points to the, the quality and, and the tenor of what it is that we have at Shakajuan. It's just a, a really phenomenal piece of geology and, and we're confident that when we keep drilling, we're going to make more discoveries and, and that's a lot about what we're about to demonstrate the value in the project. Now, where are you at in the drilling cycle and what are the next steps for development and a timeline to production? Yeah, we're into the summer program now, so rigs have restarted. Uh, again, not insignificant. Um, today, there's six rigs turning. Shortly, there'll be eight rigs turning. And uh, we're continuing to work on resource development. So we're teasing out that new discovery at CV13. And we're continuing to infill at CV5 as we get set for the feasibility study, which is really the next important step. Um, this, the feasibility study will continue to show you know, how good uh, Corvette is, or Shaka is Shaka as a project. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, it, it's... It's all part of the discipline of continuing to deliver in the project. Um, now, our expectation is that all of that progresses, our environmental approval documents go in in September next year. And on the assumption all of that works, then, then we're constructing in the second half of 2027 and we're commissioning in the latter part of 2028. Now, the lithium price has fallen significantly since 2022, 2023. Obviously, the market has kind of been unfavorable to the lithium sector. Um, what do you think the key drivers of this are and when do you expect to turn around? It's the complication that China represents to, to the lithium market and, and on the face of it, it works both ways. Now, China has surprised to their up the upside, if you like, in their ability to create a supply response. So, so more lithium units in the market. Um, I want to say that they're not particularly high quality. So, so you could argue that 
that as higher cost production makes its way to the market, you've really set up an environment for longer run, higher pricing. And, and my sense is that's actually what's happening in the lithium market now. Um, as to what China does next, well, they, they are the key driver of lithium consumption. And the good news is cell costs in China are plummeting. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important driver in growth in the market. And this is where I think the, the surprise to the upside ultimately the comes is, from. That's yeah. right. Yeah. China will come back to the market. They will need more supply. Um, and, and you're going to see a price response. I, I think this is as frustrating as it is. Yeah. It's the natural order of things in the lithium world. It's still a relatively small market growing off a relatively small base, but it has to grow a lot more before the end of this decade. And hence, there will be a price response at some point in time. I'm sure your optimism will definitely drive our investor sentiment in the sector moving forward. What's your longer term outlook for lithium? And where do you see the opportunities or bigger opportunities in the North American space? Yeah, well, it's, it's, an, it's the next big growth market beyond China or North Asia. And uh, that's very much about what we're setting up for. So. So we don't see ourselves as just another uh, contributor to the China supply base. What, what we're really about is interconnected mine supply with new chemical capacity in North America and, and hopefully Europe over time. And that's what we're actively working on. Um, as much as I appreciate uh, um, um, shareholders are frustrated with the current state of equity markets, mm -hmm. I can tell you that the industry itself is actually really active and thinking about the next wave of growth. And, and a lot of it is about setting up for, for North America. So, so we feel we've got an important part to play. And I'm happy to say that that leads to healthy engagement within the industry about that next wave of growth. Ken, thank you for joining us as always from the helm here. And welcome back to Perth. And we can't wait to see what's on the horizon for Patriot Battery Metals. Thanks very much, Grady. Nice to be with you.